Good morning. <clears throat> I should take time to clear my throat first. Sorry about that. Um, Cowboy Jim, Fort McMurray, Alberta, Canada, in the north. Um, it seems as though the evacuation notices uh, due to the forest fire that um, we had three separate fires um, around Fort Mac and and um, I'm sure that they weren't uh, started naturally, but nonetheless, who knows? Um, but we'll move on from that. Uh, this morning, um, let me back up. Yesterday, a friend of mine called and he asked for prayer. I said, uh, I'll be glad to. I'm on it. That's it. And... Um, uh, then this morning, um, someone left a comment on my YouTube channel and um, they asked for uh, prayer for their YouTube channel. And um, I, I, I can do that. I don't know what their YouTube channel is. I don't know the subject matter uh, at all. And... Um, I, I am reminded that we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against powers and principalities in high places. So I'm going to word the the, uh, the prayer um, kind of carefully. And um, But the bottom line uh, about the first friend um, who sent me a request um God gave me the answer for that. I I was in a quandary how uh, to pray. Um, I I asked the Lord. I said, Father, I don't I don't know. I don't know how to pray for my brother. Um, I I don't know what you God are doing in my brother's heart. I I do know that God loves that brother. I also know that that brother loves the Lord. And so I was um, doing what I do in the morning, coffee, cigarette, out back, talking with God. Should never have started smoking, okay? But at age seven, well, you're not that smart. And at age 74, I'm still not that smart, okay? Um, but I shouldn't have done it. And it's, it's, it's not a wise thing to do. And so I will mention that in answer to the second request uh, or first request uh, from my friend, I, and my answer to him was simply, I'm on it. He, he, he wanted me to pray for him. I said, hey, I'm on it, hey. I, I'm glad to do that. And I took it to God. And God gave me the answer on how to pray. He gave me the answer with one of my really old videos from uh, a year or so ago. And on on my um, phone, on um, I, I I will be watching a, a YouTube video, and another series of videos will come up from the eight hundred and sixty odd videos that I've done, and the subject hit me really got my attention. And the subject on that uh, video was hatred. How do you deal with it? And then under that, uh, a subtitle, somewhat of a subtitle, a true hate crime. And that, when I did that video, and it's a must, See, I had just come through the worst 
time in my life, the worst time. I, I am used to uh, saying something and people listening and, and I'm used to them believing what I have said. And I, I, I was um, shocked in this particular video. Again, hatred. How do you deal with it? A true hate crime. And you, it, as I said, it is a must see. So, I'm first going to pray for um, the one who asked me um, for to pray for their channel. And second, I, I will um, pray for my brother, um, who God already, through the video that he helped me do a year or two ago, um, he, he delivered the answer to, to the resolution to my friend's problem. Okay. Okay. So, hey, I apologize for uh, my appearance. Okay. Okay. Father, I don't know what that YouTube channel is that that man or woman don't know. Ask for me to pray for. Um, I don't know what it is. And, but they ask, and I'm going to pray for their channel. But God, you take this prayer and you throw it as far as you choose to, or you bless that blessed YouTube channel. I hope it's a a blessed YouTube channel. I hope the content is correct. Um, it is best for me to have you as a people. Don't even give me any information at all. I don't want my mind to get in the way. I want God to have his way. And for my brother, um, who asked for prayer. Uh, and I said, I'm on it. God, God, only you can reach down and touch his heart in terms of, of what you are doing in his heart and what you choose to do in his heart. You, God, you alone. You're the only one. In, in, in this um, amen. I, I, I don't do the amen stuff much at all, okay? Because I pray, I listen, I talk in prayer, in a prayerful attitude towards God. I mean, hey, most times I take my hat off, not always. If I'm in a restaurant, I'll take my hat off. If I'm with someone else, I won't, I won't, I won't, I won't pray. I won't insist on another person adhering to what I happen to think is right. Okay? I'm not going to embarrass them. They want to pray. If, if I know them real well, I know their heart, attitude towards God. Hey, I'll ask them. You know, you want me to say grace? You want to say grace. And my one friend, uh, he, he will always um, go along with that. He's not afraid of anything. I mean, he is not intimidated. So that's the way it is. So hats back. I'm on. Uh, won't be too long. And uh, I... Um, or who knows how that goes. Um, won't be too long and I'll get tidied up. I, 
been in a quandary this morning about going to church and so on. And hey, hey, uh, in Fort Mac, we have um, uh, since uh, last night and 24 hours before where we have gotten about an inch and a half of rain. That's going to do nothing but help um, slow the fires down. It may not put the fire out that's down there 50, 60 feet into the muskeg because we end up with hot spots uh, after a fire has gone through and sometimes it can break out six months later because it's been down there, my Scottish friends will understand, down there in the peat, uh, the muskeg, and that stuff just keeps burning. It does. I I have purposed in my heart to accomplish what God wanted me to say on these two issues. Um, he says, "Just share my heart." Um, in in the video, a uh, hatred. How do you deal with it? Um, I shared my heart. A hey? I had been drugged oh, on one occasion or a long time ago, about 10 years, uh, might be more. Uh, I had been drugged uh, by uh, a 26-year-old uh, who, um, anyways, um, and in that he drugged me, when I hit the ground, I am not used to drugs, eh? I mean, I've only experienced uh, the joy of um, morphine once. Oh, it was really good. Eight days in ICU, uh, Big Mare kicked me, broke eight ribs. Every time I had x-rays, there were a few more, started off with three or four or five, and and then they kept x-raying every time. There were more, and finally, the last count I had was eight left arm had a crack in it from the shoulder to the elbow and and the big mare had slapped me on the side of the head and broke my nose and blood all over and all that sort of stuff and um I, I, I learned how to enjoy morphine until the day came when I suggested to the surgeon that I was leaving ICU and I was going home. That did not meet with approval. I went home anyways. And um, so I don't know drugs. I don't know. I know, I know when I was terribly, terribly injured, and and I asked the surgeon, uh, I mean, I had the scaffold had fallen over, and I dropped oh, 13 feet, at least 13 feet, into a handstand. <laughs> Kept my face off the ground, uh, wrecked my ankle, my heel, uh, hurt my hip destroyed my shoulder and exploded my left elbow. And they had put a lot of effort into trying to set my elbow. Uh, four doctors worked on it. Uh, they wouldn't give me anything for pain uh, in case they thought I had to have surgery right away or something. I don't know. Uh, they weren't uh, inclined to... Um, uh, speak a lot about God and Jesus, the Christ, and I did. I don't think they appreciated it, but I wasn't talking much about God that day because I'd sat in the hospital from three o'clock. I had drugged myself out to my truck from where I'd fallen. I, I ran a big truck and, and, um, I remember looking across as I crawled uh, on one arm and two knees and uh, trying to protect the exploded elbow. And I remember looking across at a man sitting in a car at the stop sign. And that man 
watched me and he watched me. I, 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 in my agony, uh, I saw him watching and I thought, I can't, I can't use, I can't beg him to help me. And he drove away and he drove away. And so I learned from that. I won't turn my back on someone who's in a situation, even if it is their own fault, as that was mine. I remember sitting in the wheelchair at the front of the hospital in a town to the south of us. And uh, they had phoned my wife, uh, my first wife, and she had brought my two sons in, Big, Big Joe and Big Scott. And they weren't big then. And they stood in front of me as I sat in the chair. I'd ask for something for pain. They said, we're not giving you anything for pain until uh, the, the surgeons all get together <clears throat> and see what they can do for you in order if they might need anesthetic. And I remember uh, um, passing out on that chair, my, I, I, I don't think my two sons and my wife saw me do that, but um, I got there to the hospital at three o'clock, roughly. It wasn't until after seven o'clock that the doctors had finished their supper and they came to see if they could repair my elbow and Again, uh, no, nothing for pain. And I remember most clearly the next day, and I asked the uh, doctor who really particularly hated me because he was from a different a denominational perspective than I was. And I was well known in that little town. It was in that little town that my co-workers uh, um, started calling. There was a plumber there. He was an Irish uh, plumber. And he was the first man that started to call me Rev. And the reason he did was he liked me. He respected what God was doing in my life. And Fifteen years later, I, I met his children, and they walked right up to me. And they said, Rev, how are you doing? And I thought, you, you can't buy that level of respect. It's, it's, it's not necessarily even earned by yourself. It's almost a gift from God. But I remember that surgeon and he told me, I, I said, what's the prognosis, sir? He said, well, he said the four doctors had tried to reset my elbow and the radial head had been broken off about two inches down from the elbow joint and everything was a mess. And bone chips in there, they never did get those on. The surgeon at that little hospital said, you are a cripple. He said, you are a, a cripple today. You are going to be a cripple a year from now. He said, you are going to be a cripple the day you die. I thought, what happened to bedside manners? Um, but I knew what happened. It was hatred. Hatred. Because I chose to believe in a Messiah. He was of a religious perspective that he did not believe in a Messiah. 
he evidenced hatred and um, that was in 1985 and he sent me home after I requested a specialist he just sent me home I don't even know if he gave me anything for pain I do know that that was um, perhaps on a Thursday he sent me from the hospital um, on Saturday um, a hospital in Calgary phoned and they said why aren't you here I said where's here and the lady said uh, you are supposed to be here for emergency surgery on your elbow. I said, no, no one told me. That doctor in his hatred of my belief in Jesus, in God, the God of the Bible, his religion and mine were also based on the God of the Bible, but he did not accept the Messiah. The lady in the hospital that was wondering why I wasn't there, uh, she said, um, have you eaten anything today? I said, yes, I just had breakfast. And she said, well, you stop eating and you come uh, to the hospital today and tomorrow morning we will do emergency surgery on you. I said, okay, okay, okay. They, uh, there was a wonderful surgeon in Calgary um, at a hospital that is no longer um, uh, a government hospital. It's been privatized. And that surgeon, he was a skinny little guy. I, I mean, he, I wasn't, I was, um, I was pretty big uh, in muscle, not fat muscle and uh and uh uh they put my elbow in a special uh tool after he had done the surgery but my arm had not moved at all except for the doctors in that little small town um when they had tried to set my elbow they really invoked torture, uh, and I didn't feel a thing. The pain had gotten so big that I just passed out and lost consciousness. That's such a wonderful state to be in, and um, it was very good. But that skinny surgeon saved my life as I knew it. It still took a year and a half to get back to work. It took much longer until my arm had healed enough that I, I could never, ever again do a push-up. A third of my elbow was going. And I, I look at this video, Hatred, uh, how do you deal with it? And uh, under it, the subtitle, A True Hate Crime. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against powers and principalities in high places. When we are not on our guard to walk in the scripture that asks the question, how can you hate your brother when he, your brother, is actually made in the very image of God? 
my question is, how do you hate anyways? I, 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 I don't think I could, I could be so wrong. I don't think hatred is a sin of the flesh. I think a sin of the flesh is lust and, and stuff like that. And lust can take the form of uh, overeating, gluttony, and all those things. But I, 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 I can't judge. I don't know. I'm not God. I hear from God. I compare it to Scripture I compare it to the things I've heard God say in the past. I can't hate. It's not my place. In um, this video, Hatred, How Do You Deal With It? A True Hate Crime. I delineate detail um, an experience that I had uh, three years ago, maybe three and a half. It's coming on to near four, and um, and you you've just got to watch it, okay? Just got to. You 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 will not believe. You well, I told two supervisors what was happening, they didn't believe me at all, not a lick. They knew me. They knew me for two and a half years. I I, I, I know the one supervisor, uh, uh, the man on the hoe, um, he, he said, God bless you to the supervisor, a night shift. Supervisor said, I don't think you should say that. And the guy on the hose said, why? He said, you, you asked Jim on the public radio, on the company radio. The man on the hose said, Jim, why, why shouldn't I say, um, God bless you to, to, it's kind of like saying God speed. Okay. It's putting approval. On the person's life, um, I, I told him. I said, "Brother, I said, uh, uh, can we get together um, after after work? I, I I don't want to be talking on the on on the company radio. I don't want to get anyone in trouble." He said, "Yes," and I thought, "No, God gave me the opportunity to speak." I went right back on the radio. I said, "Brother, can I give answer to that right now?" He said, yes, you can. He said, I want to know. I want to know why I shouldn't say God bless to our supervisor. I said, when you say God bless you, you are invoking the creator of the universe to bless such and such a person. I said, you need to say God bless in a different manner. You spoke it. I said, you spoke it. You said, God bless. God bless. And he had, that's how he said to the supervisor, God bless you. I said, when I, I said, you, you, you listen to how I say that. I said, dear God, you bless that supervisor whom I, oh dear God. I so respected that man. I so respected him. And I still do for all the things that I saw him do right. And uh, he didn't believe me either. So you watch this video. You take your hurts. You take your pain. You take your agony. You take your hard attitude. You take it to God. In this video, 
I declare simply what God said. God said, Vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. Because if vengeance were mine, I would be consumed with hatred. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against powers and principalities in high places. Those two supervisors that I told what had happened in this video, who did not believe me, I, I say this. I forgive you both. That head guy at that company who asked me not to come back because I'd been through too much, I forgive you. I forgive that man. I pray he watches my videos. That man who drugged me and beat me, I let him beat me. I forgive him too. If you are having a hard time with hating someone for what they have done for it to you, I don't care. It's a terrible thing. It's a terrible thing when people inflict their opinions on another's life. So you're going to live until you die. Only you can determine where you spend eternity. You walk in forgiveness or you walk in hatred. But don't you dare think that you're going to receive forgiveness from God when you hate another. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. To God be the glory forever and ever. Amen and amen.